They're eating her. And then they're going to eat me. Oh my God! This movie does something special here. And it took me a few playthroughs to realize it, and it's gonna take some context to explain, so please bear with me. So there I was, watching and re-watching Troll 2 in search of some golden nugget, some redeeming feature, some saving grace. With some odd transitions, could this be completely based on misdirection? Was trolling a term back then, and could this possibly explain the lack of trolls in the film? Is this a commentary against vegetarians? Why is everyone so weird? And then, like a light at the end of a very excruciatingly long tunnel, I see it. A Troll 2 documentary made by the cast themselves. Huzzah! Finally! A stethoscope to the mumbled heartbeat of this confusing tale, and I find it. The meaning of Troll 2, its true essence. And just behind it, a light. Kinda dusty, but still fresh from disuse. You must have dropped it. No matter, an honest mistake. I'll leave it here now for your benefit, and you can use it when you're ready. Before we get down to the grand scheme of Troll 2, real quick, to answer my aforementioned queries, this film wasn't an active troll, in fact it was originally named Goblin before being named Troll 2, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure Troll is the name of the magical realm mentioned in the original Troll, but besides that I don't think that there's any connection between the films. I also got the impression that the director, Claudio Fragoso, um, didn't quite understand the distinction between trolls and goblins. But to be fair, um, I can understand that. I mean, if who cares? <laughs> also, that whole commentary against vegetarians was true, but still confusing because the goblins would eat half human, half vegetarian, so then I don't understand why they're vegetarian at all. Half plants, half humans. Sacrifice me. But perhaps most interestingly was how the director Claudio Fragozzo saw Americans through some hyper-American lens, convinced that this is how they were. This this really might be the most interesting part of the film. As far as as far as being a film croissant goes, this film has the cultural mistranslations you might get from a spaghetti western, or perhaps more notably from red westerns however intentional or unintentional that they were, which really is cause for self-reflection. We said, Claudio, we really think this will work better. It's a little more PG. This is how American teenagers talk. And he said, I know how American teenagers talk. <laughs> this is how American teenagers talk. <laughs> this is all intriguing, but it's not what made this movie into the special snowflake that it is. That's a much more confusing tale. One that I'll tell you now. I don't know what to do with my face. Like, what do I, what do I do with my face? I don't, like and subscribe. So Troll 2, I watched it all wrong. It became obvious as I witnessed super fans both adore and tear down the film that they love, something that you kept seeing over and over in the documentary. They would laugh with it just as much as they would laugh at it. It's the natural enemy to a film croissant like myself, constantly in search of cinematic perfection. But this movie isn't a movie at all. Okay, hear me out. These superfans, these revolutionaries, true cinephiles who would comb through the local blockbuster for not only the great films that help expand our human experience, but also the ones fallen over, covered in the local fauna, beneath the B movie shelf. A breeding ground for goddamn carpet beetles. You gotta make sure you vacuum those guys. They had seen something special in Troll 2 that the rest of us seem to miss. What if Troll 2 is just a series of hilarious short YouTube videos? Not shorts, just short YouTube videos, you know. Consider how right now, as you watch this video or maybe any other video on YouTube, 
that while you may recognize a finely crafted video like this one, or perhaps you just subconsciously enjoy what's in front of you for some reason you can't quite explain, you don't necessarily seek a well-made video. Content is content and it's enjoyed entirely for what it is. It's why most YouTubers will still film in 1080 instead of 4K. It's why we use cell phones instead of fancy camera equipment. When the latest YouTuber makes a complete fool of themselves, we laugh at them and their stupidity just as much as we praise their brilliance and, and probably send them really mean messages just, just for no reason other than we're upset at something in our own lives. Anyways, this space, this stupid and brilliant space, this is where Troll 2 lives. I'd wager, had it been released today, not as a film, but as a series of short videos, it probably would have blown up. I mean, okay, check this out. Do you see this writing? Do you know what it means? Hospitality. And you can't piss on hospitality. I won't allow it. What are you going to do to me, Daddy? Tighten my belt by one loop so I don't feel hunger pains. Anyways, I feel like that's that's really all there is to say of the movie. I really tried. I freaking tried. I went into this movie. I watched it. I rewatched it. I really thought I would find something. I love going into movies and finding the positive. I don't really like just just hating movies. I, I, I always want to see what, what could be good about it. Wow, I can't talk. If you plan on watching Troll 2, leave the judgment at the door and just let the movie take you on a journey on its own terms. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care. I can remember sitting down with Michael and Connie and, and Margo and we would take the script and we would try to decipher what it meant. We, we would sit there for hours looking at this script and, and try to do you know, an analysis on the scenes and we couldn't do it.